Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to reInvent 2022. Hopefully, the slides that you saw here kept you engaged till I got started here. I myself am a morning person, and uh, being from Seattle, I love to play. Uh, I, I love to vacation in some place warm, so a, a beach is perfect for me. Um, I love dogs, and I prefer action movies over horror. I also see our session here is fairly full. I thank you guys for joining us in our session today. I understand there are thousands of sessions in reInvent, so we are truly appreciative that you're here with us. I'm Varun Kamla Karan. I'm a Principal Customer Solutions Manager at AWS, and this is ADM 301, Ultra Low Latency Machine Learning, presented to you by Amazon Ads. Joining me on stage will be Shenghua Bao, who's the Senior Manager for Applied Sciences in the Sponsored Products team within Amazon Ads and also Pooja, who's the manager for machine learning in the ads moderation team within Amazon. In our session today, I'll talk to you about who Amazon Ads is and why we at AWS consider them to be a key strategic partner for us. I'll also introduce the two teams whose journey we are gonna be presenting here today. Next comes the interesting part. This session, we have two focus areas. The first, we'll have Shenghua come and talk to you about what sponsored products are, and he'll talk to you about how his team developed deep learning models to understand these products, and he'll also talk to you about how he un his team identifies trends in the marketplace and how they use this to make predictions that help customers as they shop in, on Amazon.com. He'll also share with you the challenges his teams face and some creative out-of-the-box solutions that they've developed using AWS services to solve these problems. He'll also share a lot of insights, lessons learned um, along this whole journey, so look out for those. Next, we'll have Pooja on stage, and she'll talk to you about ads moderation. Now, ads moderation is is a key area for Amazon advertising. She'll talk to you about the life cycle as an ad goes through this moderation process. She'll tell you how her teams have used uh, AWS services uh, to help improve this moderation process. She'll provide you with a chronological order of every AWS feature that they use and how this feature helped improve their model, either from a cost perspective or performance perspective and so on. Again, she'll share a lot of insights, a lot of lessons learned in this journey. So stay tuned there. And during this presentation, there might be a slide or two that you like, so feel free to take those pictures. But we request that you do so without flash. Also, at the end of the presentation, I share with you how you can connect with the two speakers that are going to be on the stage today. And also, collect some cool Amazon ad swag in the process. So look out for that. So now, who is Amazon Ads? Amazon Ads is Amazon's advertising business. If you've searched for a product on Amazon.com, you've probably seen search results having a tag of sponsored or you've seen video ads as you're looking at content on Prime Video or Freebie. Or conversing with Alexa, she might have recommended a product for you. Or when you're in Whole Foods, you may have seen some physical ads all across the store. All of these ads were served by Amazon's advertising systems. To give you an idea of the products that they have, please look at the screen here. All of these products are geared towards their mission to help brands create ad experiences that delight customers and deliver meaningful results. Now, with their deep insights, their reach, and premium properties from music to streaming, they're able to connect advertisers to the right audience at the right place, both on and off Amazon. Now, talking to you about the teams that are here. As I told you, we have two focus areas. So there are two teams who are going to be sharing their journey and their experiences in this presentation. The first team here is the sponsored products team. 
The sponsored products team helps advertisers showcase individual products through ads on the search results page. Now, as you'd imagine, for this, they need to have a detailed understanding of what the product is. And they need to do inferencing at really low latencies and extremely high scale. To give you an idea of the scale that they operate in, they process tens of billions of impressions every day. They need to have a detailed understanding of billions of products. And doing so, they have developed more than 100 deep learning models with billions of learnable parameters. And they need to perform trillions of online inferencing every day. There's some amazing and fascinating work that this team does. Next, the ads moderation team. The moderation team helps make advertising, advertisements on Amazon safe, trustworthy, and of high quality for the customers. It's not only that. It helps create a successful en environment for product sales. Amazon ads, have, Amazon ads having operations worldwide poses some unique challenges to this team. Now, because they are global, they need to be able to moderate millions of ads every day, but in more than 15 different languages, in 20 different locales. And they need to do that all within a few hours. Again, the engineering that they do is pretty phenomenal here. We also understand that you and your organization may be at a different scale than what's shown over here. But there's a lot of knowledge nuggets, a lot of insights, a lot of experience that's going to be shared here that we believe is beneficial to you. This is years of these teams chipping away and making efforts to solve this problem. This is years of experience that's distilled into this single presentation here. So please stay tuned. Now, to give you more details about how they've solved these problems and the challenges they face, I'd like to first call Shengwa Bao onto the stage. Shengwa, please come on over. All right. Thank you for looking for the introduction. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Really welcome to have all of you here. I'm Shenghua. I'm leading the deep learning effort for the ad response prediction of the Sponsor Product Program. Sponsor Product Program, as Falun already shared, is one of the biggest programs for Amazon advertising today. And today I'm going to share a little more about how we do the scalable feature serving for the deep learning models we are operating. So first take a look. How does the Sponsor Product look like? It's very much context aware. Since we are now in the holiday season, this shop is looking for Christmas pajamas. And we return a bunch of results along with the search results that are relevant to what the shop is looking for. So to a certain extent, sponsor product is very much context aware. And as the shop continues to engage, they click one of the product and start to explore more details about the product. Can have different style, different uh, 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 details about the product can look into. At the same time, we also offer another list of the sponsor product for the shoppers' consideration with more options of different colors, different size, different style, of course, different price options as well. This way, we can help the shopper continue to engage and with more different uh, options to consider. So in both examples, the sponsor product we recommend are related to what the shopper is looking for at Amazon.com. Now, get to the details. Behind the sponsor product, there are different types of machine learning learning to support the business. One of the common ask is how likely the shopper is going to engage with the product. And this is an important topic because as we know, how likely the shop is going to engage is going to be essential for us to drive the customer engagement for what we show, and also to drive the advertiser return for their investment. This leads to very typical machine learning tasks in the S industry. One is like a CTR, click-through click -through rate prediction, and also CVR for the conversion prediction. 
In our case, the conversion prediction will also be similar to the purchase prediction, basically how much shop uh, they purchase. And there are many different features behind this kind of ad response prediction models. Of course, in the pajama example, you need to honor the co context of what the shop is looking for. And more important, you need to understand the product you are returning. What is this product about? Is this product related to what the shop is looking for? And there may be many tons of product in Amazon today. This is related to the, what the shop is looking for. And then, how likely the shop is going to engage with the product? We need to understand the, the trend of the product they are engaging with. And this is consistently evolving. For example, we are now in the holiday season. The pajama or Christmas related gift will go up for their engagement rate. A little more about how we are operating worldwide. There are currently uh, 20 marketplaces we are operating for the sponsor product and backed by hundreds of machine learning models. Most of them are deep learning models today. We are also during, uh, supporting the large scale influencing. During the peak time, we need to deal with hundreds of millions of deep learning requests for online influencing with a very small amount of uh, latency we have and that's per second. So in the rest of the presentation, what I'm going to focus is how we do the online feature serving in a scalable way. There are two types of features I'm going to use as an example in my talk. One is for the product understanding, which is relatively stable, and the other one is shopping trend understanding, which is very much evolving in the real time. So let's first take a look at the product understanding. Product can be represented in many different ways. And the simple approach is always like, hey, use the list of the keyword describing the product title or describing the product uh, details. And this works to a certain extent. It can match against the query the shop is looking for, like a Christmas pajama. But it cannot address some of the semantic gaps about different keyword. In this case, the shop is looking for Christmas pajama. And imagine another case. They may simply looking for uh, holiday PJAs or holiday sleepwear. How can we capture the semantic meaning about different recommendations using different keyword is key for the product understanding. And in our example, we very much start to use a deep learning approach, trying to represent the product using a vector of numbers. In this deep learning, what is also oftentimes called uh, embedding representations. We take the description of the product's input and convert to a vector. And in this way, the vector can be used for the calculation of the similarity between the product with the query and captures the latent semantic uh, among the queries. And in more detail, here's how we proceed. We use bird-like model to do the base model training. The base model contains over a billion trainable parameters and is trained on using the product description and the title of over a billion product we have. So the base model, to a certain extent, is not necessarily going to work directly for our use case. When we apply the base model without fine tuning, it does not give us the performance we want. So one important step we first take as an example I put here is to make sure we tune the base model using the sponsor product click as a target. After this fine tuning, we are able to further distill the model of the knowledge to a dimension of 100 for each product. That's basically the product embedding we get out of this uh, training process. So eventually, you are going to see an example in the uh, left below. This is how each product looks like now in the deep learning world. Now the challenge is how, to, how do we do the online serving? We have billions of products. Each of them have the embedding already learned. One simple way is, OK, load the product embedding into all the online influencing machine, and then run into the challenge of the size of product embedding itself. Because we have billions of products, the size of the product can go to multiple terabytes. And that's going to be challenging. Even if we have the largest EC2 instance available for online influencing, and we need a smart way of using the memory we have available there. Okay, another option we save all of the 
product embeddings through a remote cache, just like an elastic cache. And in this way, it's also running to another challenge because product embedding is not simply sitting there. It's being requested in a very frequent manner. It can go up to hundreds of millions of product embedding requests per second. And imagine if we have uh, several uh, KB of the product embedding for each, uh, each of the requests. That would easily consume more than 50 BPS of the network consumption. What does that mean? That's basically equivalent to over a million users watching the Netflix HD movies altogether. So, to address the challenges from the memory limitation and also network consumption, what we propose is a scalable uh, hybrid approach. It's very intuitively simple. We keep the local cache for the most popular product along with the influencing machine for the online influencing. And that would save the memory for the influencing machine and also save the network cost significantly. We only retrieve the missed tail product from the remote cache when necessary. And of course, write the retrieved value back to the local cache to make sure the local cache is up to date. In this way, we are able to host the popular product in thousands of influencing machines and also able to reduce 95% of the over the network traffic. That's not enough. We first introduce additional optimization for the serialization of the payload. We use binary approach that can reduce the size of embedding in the network for more than half. And we also introduce the AC optimization to make sure the traffic of the influencing request coming and also are processed by the elastic cache from the thing available soon. With all of this optimization in place, we are able to serve billions of product embedding and also have them uh, accessed with a latency of less than one millisecond at P99. So now we have a good list of product embedding land served online. It is also fairly important to understand how popular, how shop engagement are evolving at a different point of time. Last week, we just had the biggest sale of the year. And during summer, we also have prime day sales. During this kind of site-wide big sales event, shoppers' behavior changes dramatically. And we need to capture shoppers' uh, change along with the event. There are also seasonal trends happening here and there. For example, after summer, we may have the black back to school July. And uh, last week, many of you may have ordered like uh, Thanksgiving groceries. As we are also entering into the Christmas season, like the example we have, the shop is looking for Christmas pajama or gift for the family. With that in mind, this kind of trend are also happening in the different granularity. We can observe the shopper's behavior evolving on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, and also even on an hourly basis within the day. They are evolving at a different rate. And this trend is also happening at different granularity. The trend can happen at the query level, can happen at the product level, or combination of the two. How to detect this shopping trend in real time is also challenging for us, simply because of the scale we are processing. We are having tens of billions of impressions every day, like Varun already shared earlier. And the solution to support that is using some of the existing AWS solutions we already have. We use Kinesis to process the shopper's product engagement in real time. And we use the Lambda function to process the features and the event coming in. We will attribute the, fe uh, the event to the right shopping trend or detect new shopping trend as it goes. This approach is very intuitive and when we have the features detected, we will also write them to the elastic cache for the online feature access. In this approach, we are able to cover more than 98% of the traffic online 
and we are also again able to achieve less than one millisecond for the P99 access. However, the challenge we are facing is not on the AWS system itself. It's more about the real production uses. And uh, it's very uh, intuitive. You may imagine bot traffic is everywhere. So in order to deal with uh, online real-time traffic understanding, we have to deal with the bot traffic as well. Bot traffic can impact the shop trend understanding in two ways. One, it can introduce the noise to the shopping chain because the bot traffic is, may simply click more than 100 times higher than a real shop. In a short amount of time, you may detect that it's a shopping chain, but actually it's not. It's coming from bot traffic. More related to today's talk, it's also challenging the system as well. If one of the shards, either from Kinesis or Elastic Cash, they are processing the bot traffic all the time for the read and write. It is going to delay the process of the real shop traffic, uh, causing hours of delay and making the real channel to be missed. With that, we are also introducing the hybrid approach. Of course, we leverage the in-house, build a comprehensive uh, bot traffic detection model offline to get the input of the known bot traffic. But by no means, this is complete. Bot traffic is also very much evolving and getting smarter and smarter. So we have to have a way to deal with that online when all the features are not available in a long time span. So we introduced some of the shop traffic validation online and uh, uh, put the bot traffic into the slaughtering uh, for the online processing as well. With that in mind, we are also trying to acknowledge by no means we can detect all the bot traffic. So there's a chance that we can still miss some of the bot traffic. What should we do to make sure our online system is safe? One of the tricks we apply is to make sure we process the online traffic by request instead of by session ID. So in this way, even some of the bot traffic we fail to detect online, we are still able to distribute the bot traffic evenly across different shards we have. And that's how we have been making our online system stable and robust to the bot traffic today. OK. So for now, we have talked about two features as examples. One is for the product understanding, and the other is the shopping trend understanding. And the trend, when we put these two features together in the production system, we also run into the new challenges. This is a typical example of the product embedding features and also shopping channel features trying to publish to the Elastic Cash for online serving altogether. And immediately, we notice there are some uh, traffic congestion challenges. And in particular, when the batch feature is trying to be processed, uh, it's very much like a delaying all the real-time traffic. And we know it's actually more important to get the real-time traffic for the shopping chain reflected in the online serving system as much as possible. So what do we do? We introduce a priority queue to make sure we know which feature is more important to be updated in a timely manner. And we have the lambda function to process this priority queue accordingly. We are going to empty the priority queue first, and then we can deal with the rest of batch publishing for billions of uh, product embeddings. And in this way, we can also make the best use of our resource because product embedding can wait a little bit to be published, and you are not going to change the title every day. But the trend can be changed in a very dramatic way. The second challenge we oftentimes need to understand is how do we do the feature logging? And how do we support the feature machine learning operation and the debugging? Or sometimes not debugging. Simply say you introduce a new feature, but online you are not getting the performance you want. You just want to dig deep, see what's happening there. So one way, one debate we have is like uh, whether we should go like uh, enable at least from the capability perspective to have the field feature logging. That's very challenging. We are having actually over one billion feature access to log per second if that's to, that's to be implemented. And that basically translates to 
over one terabyte feature access log generated per second as well. And our solution is also not necessary to have the full feature logging. We introduce the tiered approach. For example, we first use Amazon CloudWatch to make sure all the online system operations are up and running smoothly. We introduce the alliance for the feature coverage, for the feature hit rate, for the feature latency. And in case something goes wrong, we will send the alarm for us to the, for the deeper investigation. And when there's a need, indeed, something very special happen or something require deeper uh, investigation, we introduce the capability for the adaptive sampling for the target period for the target feature you are looking for. And we can log that portion of the feature in the local influencing server. And when the bandwidth allows, we will upload the log to S3 bucket for further analytics, just like using Amazon EMR. With this approach, we are being able to uh, root cause most of the issues we find online and uh, support our online operations uh, well so far. The challenge, what I'm going to share is about the availability because the feature we are dealing with is very critical to the business. It's a tier one system. However, because of the feature we are supporting, it's also taking time to recover if anything goes wrong. You need to publish the batch of the features for billions of products. You need to warm up the features using the real-time shopping trend. And that poses a challenge for the availability for the single replica. And our solution here is by following the best practice of AWS to have multiple AC for the high availability. In particular, if one of the shards run into issues, either due to network connection or the storage issues, we are able to fall back the traffic to the other two shards that are available. And then we can remove this from the app config configuration, move it to the standby mode, and start to populate these features for the particular shard again. Here we will look into the DynamoDB for the feature versions we have, I look into the S3 bucket for the backup features we can publish again, and also look into the streaming signals to warm up the shopping channel features to make sure it's fully functioning before it goes back to the production for online serving. All right. With that, I'd like to share with you a little more about what we discussed. So we start with the topic of sponsored product and machine learning. It's very important for us to understand the shopper engagement ahead of time, and that leads to the requirement of deep learning or machine learning for the prediction. There are many features available, and we use two examples, one for the batch features for shop understanding, just like to understand, okay, pajama is equivalent to PJs or similar to sleepwear. And uh, we also talk about real-time shopping trend, just like the trend we are in for the holiday season. And these two features come together, run into the new issues, and uh, we handle them all together. The challenge comes from also from the actual low latency requirement for the feature serving and also the scale Amazon is operating. We need to serve billions of uh, product for the online embedding rep uh, representation. We also need to detect the trend from tens of billions of impressions every day. And with both uh, features together, we need to operate for the feature access within one millisecond at P99. And all of these are made possible by leveraging the AWS service and the best practices we have already. Some of the AWS service very much you are using maybe on a daily basis already. Kinesis, Lambda, S3, SQS. But we are able to custom the solution in a way that is able to tailor to the advertising use case and also meet the requirement of the scale and latency we are operating. Uh, thanks to the AWS technology as well, we are now also able to support the scaling of the features for 20 marketplaces worldwide. And as we speak, as we just finished the 
biggest sale event of the year, we are in the middle of scaling down our hardware for cost saving as well. So that basically concludes my presentation today. And uh, one more thing I'd, ask, I'd like to ask is you may also try the Christmas pajama in Amazon.com or try some Christmas gift for your beloved ones. This is a time and for you to, to buy the product for your family. Or, and, and the most important, this will also give you the recap of how the challenges we faced and the lessons we learned today. Thanks. <laughs> With that, I'm going to introduce uh, Pooja to the stage to talk more about ads moderation using AWS technologies. Thanks, Shanwa. Hello, everyone. I'm Pooja. With respect to the slides in the beginning, I am a night person, and I prefer tea to coffee. I am part of the Advertising Trust Organization within Amazon. And uh, one of our core responsibilities is to moderate ads. In Shanwa's talk, you learned how the challenges they faced with respect to scaling feature serving for sponsored product recommendations and how they overcame these challenges with innovative solutions using the right AWS services. In my talk, I'm going to talk about four AWS services that we use and have been powering ads moderation for multiple years and how we have evolved and optimized these solutions for ads moderation use case in terms of latency, scale, cost, and availability. So to begin with, let me start by explaining where we do ads moderation in an ads lifecycle and what is ads moderation. So ads moderation can be triggered at any stage in the ads lifecycle. Typically, ads moderation happens as soon as an ad is created and before it becomes available for our customers through ad survey. Now, what is ads moderation? Amazon Ads guidelines and acceptance policies define the bar for our customer experience. Ads moderation is nothing but the process of enforcing these policies and guidelines to ensure ads are policy compliant and are set with appropriate content audience restrictions, and so on. The main challenge for ads moderation is the scale. As Varun mentioned, we receive millions of ads each day worldwide, spanning 15 plus languages. And we need to moderate all of these ads with a tight, short SLA. This means we need to make highly precise decisions and uh, to uphold our customer trust and at the same time create frictionless experience for our advertisers. Making such high precision decisions and consistent decisions at scale requires us to build world-class engineering systems and machine learning systems along with well-authored policies. Today, uh, I'm not going to talk about all the intricacies of this moderation system, but mainly focus on four AWS services that has helped us to keep ad moderation workflow current and state of the art. This is a high level overview of ads moderation workflow. It does not contain all the intricacies of ad moderation, and it also does not depict all the AWS services that we use. It's a block diagram to show the four AWS services that I'm going to talk about today and where they are triggered in the ad moderation workflow and in what order. So Amazon Open Search is the tool we use to understand the similarity between ads so that when an ad repeats, we can use the pre-computed signals to take a decision on the newly occurring ad. 
We use Amazon SageMaker to host all our ML models that analyze the content of an ad to determine which ads fit from human review. Amazon recognitions content moderation and custom label APIs augment our ML models to determine which ads require human attention. Amazon DynamoDB is used to log all the information about the ads. As you notice, in each stage of the workflow, we cut down the volume of ads that require human review without compromising on the accuracy of the decisions we take. This helps us to meet the strict SLAs we set ourselves for. In the next few slides, I'm going to talk, go in deeper into each of the AWS service and the chronology of changes we have made uh, to optimize these solutions for ads moderation use case. So let's start with the first service, Amazon Open Search, previously called as Elasticsearch. This is the service we use to measure similarity between ads. So in 2019, we considered two ads to be similar if they matched exactly. That means character level for text fields and pixel level for image fields. And we used to measure the similarity between the ads only for ads that happened in a locale. When we did this and used the signals that we had pre-computed to take decisions rather than relying on human review, we observed 30% reduction in the ad volume that really requires human review. In 2021, we observed that advertisers tend to run their campaign across locales. So an ad running in US can also be running in Canada and UK. We took advantage of this observation and started comparing ads even across locales. This helped us to cut down the ads that require human review further by 10%. Then we parallelized the calls to open search service. This helped us to reduce the P9 lat latency by 10%. We increased the number of shards to, so that each shard corresponds to 50 to 100 GB of data. This helped us to eliminate the JVM heap pressure reaching 100% every once or twice a month. We disabled the source and stored only the required fields to be returned in a search hit. This helped us reduce the host cost by 60%. When Open Search released KNN base similarity, we quickly adopted it, and this helped us to cut down the ad volume that required human review by another 3 to 5%. Let's move on to the second service, Amazon DynamoDB. As I mentioned earlier, we use this to store all the information about an ad. Till 2018, we used to use Postgres as our data store. We moved to DynamoDB in 2018, and this helped us to increase the TPS instantly by 59x. We moved from on-demand mode to provision mode. This helped us to cut down the host cost by more than 25%. We separated processing of transactions from search queries, and this helped us to balance the load better, and we were able to eliminate 5xx errors that we used to observe each day. In 2023, we plan to configure archival strategy for DynamoDB, and we expect it to further reduce our host cost by 50%. The next service is Amazon SageMaker. As I mentioned, this is used to host all our ML models. So over time, SageMaker and AWS have released different instance types, and we have adopted them to keep our costs at check. So in 2016, Amazon, we were using Amazon EC2 P2 instances for training and inference. In 2017, we moved to P3 instances as our models evolved to deep learning models. We were able to increase the number of models by 60%, while our cost increased by 50%. When SageMaker got released, 
In 2018, we switched to SageMaker P3 instances for training and inference. This helped us to further increase the number of models by 50%. However, our cost remained same. In 2019, we switched to, switched to P3 faster instances. This helped us to further increase the number of models by 67%, while our cost only increased by 33%. In 2020, SageMaker launched G4 instances and we used them for inference. We were able to increase the mod number of models by 100%, our cost also increased by 100%. The main turning point was in 2021, when SageMaker launched Inferentia instances. We switched to them for our inference needs, and this helped us to increase the number of models, continue to increase the number of models, and we increased by 25%. However, our cost reduced by 50%. What it means is that we were running a lot more models at the cost that we used to incur approximately in 2019. The only caveat is that when we use inferential instances for inference, while we might have trained it with a different type of instance, you might have to do an additional step of calibrating the model. In 2022, instead of using SageMaker notebooks to train our model, we switched to faster distributed training jobs, and this helped us to give another little bit boost of 4% more models we could launch without any additional cost. The last service that I'm going to talk about is Amazon Recognition. It provides multiple APIs to understand image and video and much more. We basically rely on Amazon Recognition for two APIs. Content Moderation API and Custom Label API. Content Moderation API helps us to understand the image or video in an ad and attach labels corresponding to top 10, 10 top categories and 31 subcategories, all of which are very relevant for ads moderation. Amazon recognition does not take binary decisions. Instead, it gives these labels along with confidences so that you can consume the labels and configure them as per your needs. And we did the same for ads moderation. The custom labels API, on the other hand, is an auto ML vision service that helps us to quickly build image models. If we want to attach more labels to an ad that are not supported by content moderation API, but crucial for enforcing the policy guidelines that you are interested in. So in 2020, we integrated Content Moderation API into our ad moderation workflow. In, in the same year, it moved from V3 to V4. This had a bit of a negative effect. So what we saw was we had 16% more ads being sent for human review, and the precision of these labels for ad moderation use case dipped by 30%. This means we were underutilizing our human bandwidth. So what we did was we introduced a configuration to consume these labels and at thresholds that were optimal for ads moderation. This helped us to cut down the volume of ads sent for human review by more than 75%, while our precision improved by 100%. In 2021, we partnered with recognition team and shared our data to tune and evaluate the new model they were about to release. When Content Moderation API moved from V4 to V5, we saw the benefit of it. We were able to retain the same volume of ads sent for human review. However, our precision improved by further 23%. In the process, we also realized that we needed labels that were not supported by Content Moderation API, like we wanted to understand the presence of cartoonish root gestures in an ad. This made us to build a custom label model, and we iterated with data augmentation and hard mining strategies, which was just few iterations, and we were able to achieve the same precision as offered by Content Moderation API. 
In 2022, based on the lessons learned, we introduced a trigger mechanism to configure the way we consume the labels from Content Moderation API and the thresholds at which we consume it as the version of the API moves from one to the other. What it helps us is to be prepared and ensure that that these labels from Content Moderation API are consumed at the same precision for Ads Moderation use case. And as they release new labels, we start consuming it at the earliest. So we went over the four services and understood how we have optimized them over time for Ads Moderation. Here are the takeaways with respect to each of the service. When it comes to Amazon Open Search, increase sharding as required to avoid JVM heap pressure, reaching 100%. Disable source and store only the required fields in the index to save host cost. When it comes to Amazon DynamoDB, use provision mode rather than on-demand mode, especially if you know the throughput. And this helps us to reduce the cost by 25 to 30%. Configure archival strategy to further save cost. When using SageMaker, look for new type of instances that helps you to keep, red, keep the cost at check. At present, Inferentia instances helps us to cut down the cost of in production by one third. However, when you use Inferentia instances, make sure you calibrate the model. When it comes to Amazon recognition, especially content moderation API, make sure you have a configuration on your end to consume the labels as per your business needs. And set up a trigger mechanism to update this configuration as the API moves from one version to another. So here are the takeaways very specific to each of the AWS service. The main takeaway or the bottom line is this. Each AWS service makes new releases in terms of versions and features. It's very important to consume them at the earliest so that you have the best in class service for your customers. With that, I conclude my uh, talk. I'll hand over to one to come on the stage. Thank you.